And now joining us on Book TV is the author of this book, On Constitutional Disobedience, is the name of the book, Professor Lewis Michael Seidman of Georgetown University is the law professor who wrote it. Professor Seidman, are you saying it's time to throw out the Constitution? You know what, I am. <laughs> First of all, thank you for having me, uh, having me on. Um, I think this idea is right, but um, almost everybody I know thinks it's wrong. My wife, my kids, all my students. Um, um, but you know, it's a little surprising so many people uh, think it's wrong because when, when you really think about it, we're talking about a document that is over 200 years old. Um, it was written at a time when the United States looks nothing like what it looks like today. It was a small rural republic huddled along the eastern seaboard, dependent mostly on or largely on slave labor when uh, communications were difficult, travel was treacherous. Um, this was a document written by people uh, who had, many of whom had no compunctions about owning other human beings, who thought that um, women had no role to play in public affairs, and who um, uh, thought that, many, uh, that people without property ought not to be allowed to vote. So it's just really pretty bizarre when you think about it that we should decide modern public policy questions based on what they thought a very long time ago. Um, he, here's another way to, to make the point. Um, if you do the, the kind of this kind of thought experiment, suppose you are, um, let's say, the president or a senator or uh, a Supreme Court justice or just an ordinary American citizen, and you have some really big decision about an important matter of public policy. And um, I'm assuming you're quite a responsible person, so you've uh, spent a lot of time thinking about this and talking to other people, and you've carefully considered the moral implications and the public policy implications. And uh, after you've, you're all done with that, you decide on balance the right thing to do is X. And then, just as you're about to do X, somebody rushes into the room and says, wait, 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 don't do it yet. Um, I, I have something important to tell you. Some people 200 years ago who are now long dead and know nothing about our modern situation wrote down on a piece of paper that you ought to do not X. And then, you throw up your hands and say, oh, well, in that case, I'm going to throw out everything else I thought, and just because it's written down on this piece of paper, I'm going to do not X. Now, anybody who did that, I think, needs their head examined. Um, all this is pretty abstract, so, so let me make it uh, a little more specific. Um, l let's talk for a minute about guns. Now, um, most of my friends and family are surprised by this, but I'm actually quite skeptical about gun control. Um, it's not that I like guns. I don't, I would never own one, but the fact of the matter is there are 300,000 of them in the United States, and I'm doubtful that um, any law that Congress could pass could do much that's effective about gun violence. There are 300,000 laws? I'm sorry, 300,000 guns in the United States. More guns than people. Oh, so 300 million. Three, 300 million. 300 million, thank you. Okay. 300 million guns in the United States. Um, now, I understand that position is controversial, and I like to talk to people about it, and, and people have different views. I'm not sure I'm right about it. But here's how not to talk about it. The way not to talk about it is to start to talk about the Second Amendment. As soon as you start talking about the Second Amendment, two very bad things happen. The first is the discussion gets sidetracked on questions that could not be more irrelevant. So instead of talking about um, whether laws are going to control gun violence or even whether it's an aspect of natural rights to own guns. Instead of talking about any of that, we start talking about 
the relationship between the introductory clause of the Second Amendment and the operative clause, and what exactly in militia was 200 years ago, and what precisely the relationship is between the Bill of Rights in our Constitution and the English Bill of Rights. None of this has anything to do with the question. It's not I, I, it's hard to imagine that anybody would take seriously the proposition that we ought to decide what to do about guns in the United States by answering those questions. But then another bad thing happens also. As soon as you start talking about the Constitution, the temperature begins to rise. So you and I can have a good faith disagreement about what the best thing to do about guns is, and we can come away from it disagreeing but still be pretty good friends, and I could still see that you, there's something to your point. But when we start talking about the Constitution, then you're not just saying, I disagree with you about a matter of public policy. You're saying, I am disregarding the foundational document that makes the United States. It's, it's, a, it's very close to saying I'm a traitor. And when you start talking like that to me, um, it's pretty hard for us to still be friends. And there's much too much of that yelling and screaming in um, American politics today. And if we deconstitutionalized it, I think our discourse would both be more relevant and more meaningful and more civil. And, and those are really, um, really important objectives. Now let me qualify this or, or explain it in one way so as to avoid misunderstanding. Um, the fact that we ought not to obey the Constitution doesn't mean that we ought to do the opposite of everything that's in the Constitution. There are a lot of things in, that are in the Constitution that are just really good ideas. So uh, for example, freedom of speech, equality, guarantees of liberty. Those are things we ought to do not because they're in the Constitution, but because they're the right thing to do. Um, there are other things in the Constitution that maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong, but we've been doing things this way for a long time, and it's not good to have arguments about everything all the time. So, for example, I don't know whether a four-year presidential term is exactly the right length. I do know that it's a really bad idea to be arguing about that every four years, and so I don't think we should argue about it. Unfortunately, there are some other things in the Constitution um, that really are worth arguing about, that, that are just affirmatively evil. So let me give you some examples. It's just not good that somebody can be elected president of the United States when the person's opponent gets more votes. It's very hard to defend that. It's just not good that the three people in Wyoming have the same representation in the Senate as the 35 million people in California. That's something that's very hard to defend. It's just not good that people like me who live in the District of Columbia have no vote at all over the folks who rule us. I don't think that contemporary Americans are, many contemporary Americans would defend any of those results, and yet we're stuck with them because of the Constitution. Here's what this is ultimately about. The United States is our country. We live here. We have a right to have the kind of country we want. Nobody would say that we ought to be ruled by France. Nobody would say that the United Nations has a right to rule us. And for just that reason, nobody uh, should think that we ought to be ruled by people who have been dead for 250 years and whose country it's not anymore. Paradoxically, the most important three words of the Constitution, we the people, are actually violated by obsessive obedience to the Constitution. What we the people means is we the living people, not they the dead people. And getting rid of our obsession with obeying a document that written by people who are dead is the beginning of reclaiming this country as our country. What about so, Professor Seidman, the uh, amendment process, why, isn't, why can't we use that for our Constitution? 
part of the problem